privilege to have the opportunity to share a few thoughts with all of you. Let me also congratulate Harish Mariwala for setting up Yasan Foundation and the success it has had over the last 10 years. Today I have been asked to share with you my thoughts on leadership in business and marathons. For the next 30 to 40 minutes, I will try and share my learnings, observations, and to some extent my beliefs. I took up to running about 15 years ago, accidentally. Little did I know that it will become an integral part of my life. What I endured has become something that I love. It is fair to say that running and marathon running has had a profound impact on me as an individual and as a business leader. Over the years, I've become a lot more patient, observant, observant, very reflective, but my intensity has only increased. It is fair to say that there is hardly any important decision that I have made in these years which has not crossed and rehearsed during my running. Even as far as I would go to say, every important decision that I made has been preceded with a run. So it has become so much an integral part of me. Now coming to leadership, Leadership means many things to many people. And also it means different things in different contexts. To start with, it's about setting a very high aspiration. And enrolling people into believing that aspiration, that idea. Leadership is also about authenticity. In some situations, it is about leading from the front. But to me, the most important of all is the ability to build teams empower them, giving, giving them the space and realize a situation where each one of them perform better than what they think they are capable of. Now, we learn about leadership from many places. We learn from other leaders. We read lots of books. We learn from Mahabharata. 
any source we can get. And from our own experience, probably some of the best lessons are learned by your successes and failures. Then why compare leaderships and marathons? Because both have a lot in common. Both have a long-term theme. You require the cap capability to last long. To succeed, you will need a tremendous willpower, perseverance, both in leadership and in business. And you require a certain rhythm and pace to keep going. And both are injury prone. So you will have an injury if you're running a business, especially all of you. And if you're training for marathons, you will get injured one time or the other. So you need to know how to recover. And both have to outlast weather cycles. Like the current global environment we are going through. So there is so much that one can learn from marathon running while building your leadership. I want to share with you a few of them because it's a topic you can keep talking for a long time. First and foremost, running a marathon, especially running it, I don't want to say comfortably, running it smoothly, and achieving a time goal is quite an aspirational stuff. It's not easy because if you want to run that long, you need to put a lot of training. You take an average of 50 breaths while running as opposed to 15 breaths while you are resting. This is so that your body can keep up with the demand for oxygen and also handle the increased carbon dioxide. You can achieve this only by putting a lot of volume. You need to, if you really want to be a good runner, you need to be putting 50, 80, 100 kilometers a week for several weeks. If you want to be a good ultra marathon runner, you got to be putting 120, 140 kilometers a week for several weeks together. Jesse Owens put it nicely. We all have dreams, but in order to make dreams come into reality, it takes an awful lot of determination, dedication, self-discipline, and effort. So it doesn't matter how slow you run, as long as you don't stop. So that is the kind of training that is required. I think business is the same. If you want to succeed, you got to do it for the long haul. You need to prepare yourself and your organization in terms of the capability, in terms of the processes, in terms of talent, right capital structure. So I think it's a multifaceted thing. Even in marathon running, the training is very multifaceted. We'll talk about that. When you train, you train 
as per a plan, but do it over and over again so that you get the rhythm and to be able to run at a specific heart rate. Serious marathoners will tell you how important it is to train yourself to run at a low heart rate for a very long time. And it's a funny thing, putting so much volume at a low heart rate, low heart rate translates into higher speed at a higher heart rate during the race. So similarly, it is about doing things very systematically for a long time and build that organizational capability because that builds muscle memory. Like the training builds muscle memory in your body, organizations have muscle memory and you need to be building that muscle memory if you want to succeed. I would say so much so that execution becomes so consistent and boring in every company. I always say you can have innovation in strategy but keep the execution boring because you don't want too much deviation. You want to execute every time. The second thing I will talk about is fitness. I believe if you are not fit, you cannot perform. So I always say fitness first and performance next. So when you are training, unless or otherwise, you have the right strength. And all the muscles that need to be strong, whether it is your core, quads or whatever, you got to be doing the training in order to be fundamentally fit. Otherwise, you won't be able to run. You'll, you'll only get injured. People see runners as runners, but apart from running, so many other things that I have to go with if you want to be a good runner. And similar way, you can't just target growth rates if the organization is not fit. Organization has to be fit in multiple dimensions. I always say, first look at the left side of the accounting statement, the balance sheet, get it right before starting to look the right hand side, the piano. If you're not capitalized properly, and if you don't have the structures in place, the team in place, it doesn't work. You can get away by having some short-term performance, but if you want to be consistent, Overall fitness of the company is very important. And it's important to, I, I, I sometimes get, just get very I'm worried because maybe I'm old fashioned. When I talk about GMV multiple and EBITDA multiple and then people leave it there. I truly believe every business is a cash flow business. If you don't have, a, if you don't have the site of cash flows, at some point in time. I think it's over. It's very important to learn to walk up the PNL as much as we walk down the PNL. Many times we will start with revenue and you know I see statements where they will stop at a bit they won't go below that. And so I think fitness is very key. Only then the real performance is possible. The third one is even more important, which Marathon teaches you very well. You need to be running your own race and cannot get distracted by others. When you train, 
you are training based on your context, your health condition, your age, and your experience, the course that you are going to run, and the weather in which you are going to run. Many times you cannot predict that, but even then. And your own training, how much training you have put in, you are able to put in, based on which you train for a race. You may train for a five-hour marathon. But then when the race starts, it's easy to get carried away in the first few kilometers by looking at people running faster and your heart rate goes for a toss, your rhythm goes for a toss, then you end up having a poor race. If you talk to marathoners, even experienced ones, often after a race they will tell you, I missed my time because I went very fast. Same thing, we need to know what is the context in which my company is operating? What is my balance sheet? And what is the real strength and capability we have? And that should set the pace. This is not to say that don't set audacious goals. But setting goal is not good enough. Like the runner Mofara often used to say, don't keep dreaming about winning. Start training for it. So it's so important to create that capability that is required in the organization. Then you can decide the race you want to run. Otherwise you can get distracted. For example, it may be an M&A time, but if you've not built the capability for an M&A, then it's going to be very hard post the acquisition. The next one, many people think that marathon is a, is a lonely sport. Actually, it is not. The only reason you complete a marathon is because so many people are running with you. Irrespective of how many races you have run, even the most experienced runners will face situations during the race where the thought will come, why am I doing this? The pain is so much you want to give up. And it can happen for some at 30 kilometers, some at 20 kilometers, some at 15 kilometers. It doesn't matter. It can happen multiple times. The only reason you continue is because you have a lot of people running with you. And that's what I call as a lift. Even the legend marathoner, Gabriel Selassie, who has broken his own record multiple times. When he set the last record in 2008 in Berlin, he said the only reason that he could do it was because of the tailwind of the fellow runners. Every race is a new experience. So to me, it translates to having teams. Either you can go to the top and feel lonely, as the cliche says, it's lonely at the top. Or you can build teams. Empower them and have a trusted relationship. So that they act as your tailwind. And every leader will require that support one day. Because all of us go through difficult times and in my career I have felt that building great teams requires a lot of trust and empowerment.
and it requires openness. It requires the heart and mind to take criticisms. And unless we build such teams, we will feel lonely and it can't be good all the time. Then I want to talk about the journey. This is a long road, whether you're running a marathon or running business. You need to enjoy the journey. It can be a lot of fun if you learn to enjoy it. Because the destination is not about winning. That's one famous quote that I remember. It's not winning that matters. Father, it is not the willingness to win that matters. It is the willingness to put in the effort to win that matters. And that is a beautiful statement because that process that one goes through to achieve that milestone has to be very enjoyable. I started running because my dog told me one day that, you know, you're pre-diabetic, you better get on to some cardio. And I started casually, but now I run for pleasure. For the joy, for the camaraderie with fellow runners, and the whole endorphin bus. Breezing through a city, any city in the morning where you are traveling, is a beautiful way to enjoy the city. I love that experience. I see the parallel here in leadership. There is a tremendous joy to be derived in leadership. Are we leading for purpose, for a purpose? Is that what matters? That whole journey of building the company, getting the teams together and drive that purpose is a beautiful thing. You can't lead a company for valuations. Valuations will come and go. I also believe that just because there is euphoria in the market and you get easy money, you get higher valuations, taking that money is going to do many good for the company, much good for the company. So I believe that if you lead an organization with a purpose, you know what the purpose is. It gives a journey and it gives a path and money comes, success comes, valuation goes up. So whatever you put into running, you get many times back. Similarly in leadership, if you put a lot of effort in it, you will get value multiple times back. The next one I want to talk about is the weather or the wall as we call it. Every marathon runner will tell you that they hit a wall. Usually after 30 kilometers.
because in training that's all you train for and the last leg you run primarily because of willpower and those are times that you want to give up i am sure in businesses you get into such situations and the only way at such times is to stay very very firm and your mental strength and will power that's the only way you will get through those moments and in fact abraham lincoln said a very nice thing about the will power that one needs to have i quote always bear in mind that your own resolution to success is more important than any other one thing that determination and that resolution to succeed is what will carry you through in such moments so i i feel there is a lot of parallels between the sport of marathon and business and i will share one recent experience my last marathon because it's done after the covid since i started running in 2007 i pretty much run on an average couple of full marathons and couple of half marathons every year i typically alternate a full a half a full a half quarter of a quarter some years i would have missed one but i couldn't do, do a race in the pandemic so two years went without a race so i started getting worried whether i'll be able to get back and run a 42 kilometers so early this year in april i signed up for running a race in august in reykjavik and i should have spent a little bit more time thinking but i just was thinking about it and one fine day just on saturday afternoon i just signed up and i'm going to turn 60 next year so i thought better do better get into the groove again so that i can do it for a longer time and it was a disaster because may june july is a horrible months in bombay to train the weather is so bad so much road works and it was very very warm in the morning so i could never do my long runs every long runs i don't know if i don't know the long run translates all we runners uh on the road on sunday 20 25 30 30 kilometers and i couldn't complete even a single long run every long run was did not finish was a day enough so i got very worried and my some of my colleagues told me that you should just go and take it easy and do a half marathon because i done quite a few of 20 k's you will do very well and you will feel very satisfied but then i felt if i miss the 42 then it will play on my mind for a very long time it may affect my confidence to get back on a long sign up for the next long run so i decided to go and the situation was bad because it was a horrible weather very windy very cold so i got out of the hotel came came outside and realized that i was not dressed properly went back and dressed properly and it was a very up and down course to cut the long story short it was a i i will not go through the whole thing but spare you with the details but it ended up being my best race i not only 
did the whole race smoothly, I also ended up doing a great time. Then I started, started to wonder, how did this happen? Because there are other races I have trained much harder. I think the, the only reason is because of the training over a sustained period of last 15 years. I've been consistently doing about 2,000 kilometers a year minimum. So my legs have the muscle memory of a lot of miles. And they came into effect at the right time. So I, I, I believe that these things you go through, whether you are in running or in business, doesn't matter how successful you are and how much experience you have. There are moments that you go through self-doubts. In those moments, it's very critical to stay the course. I think those are some of the uh, lessons that I wanted to share with you. And I'll end by saying that we have a great opportunity in the world and in India at this time. And since most of you, I presume, are entrepreneurs in India, I would like to say we have a very exciting two or three decades ahead of us. And the opportunity is enormous because all the disruptions, whether it is in digital, whether it is in supply chain, whether it is in energy transition, or other impacts due to the geopolitics are all working in favor of India. We are a nation with tremendous talent. And it is fair to say that it is going to be India's decade and India's few decades. If there is one, if there is a time, then people can dream very big and have a chance of achieving it, I think it is one of those moments. And I'm very glad that you all have chosen the path of being an entrepreneur. And I hope you'll flourish in your businesses by leveraging the opportunity in front of you. Thank you all for listening.